Last time I was out in the garden, we worked on those beds right back there. And they're four 30 inch wide, 50 foot length beds. In those beds, we went ahead and put in arugula and kale seeds. We did a sow, direct sow with our new Earthway cedar that one of our viewers purchased for us from our Amazon wish list. So thank you again very, very much. And last week, maybe it was a little bit longer than last week, I can't remember. I started working on these beds right in here. And as you can see, there's some greenery in there. Well, this is another set of four foot, I mean four 30 inch wide, 50 foot length beds. So another section that we have to work on. And I brought in the Kelvin cultivator to kind of burn out the unwanted plants in here last, whatever it was, seven to 10 days ago. And after that, I should have put on the silage tarp to smother out the unwanted plants from growing and coming back, AKA the weeds, but I didn't do it. So since then, some things have germinated. Again, as you can see some of the greenery right there, that wasn't greenery that I planted, that just weed seeds that have germinated on their own. So this bed right here is one of the older beds in this section, so there's not as many uh, weed seeds that germinated. But right there, you can see that greenery. So here in this bed that's mostly fine, I'm just gonna go through, because uh, there's still some roots there, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the stirrup hoe, which is an excellent tool, and go ahead and knock those out, and then broad fork this section right here. And after that, since there's still a lot of greenery here, I'm gonna come back through with the Kelvin cultivator. I brought both of these broad forks down to use because each of them have their own set of benefits. I really like the construction of this Ford Farm Tech broad fork. However, it doesn't work quite as well in the heavy clay. And here's the Treadlight broad fork that has the, these blades work really, really well for, for getting into the clay and working into the clay. So I've talked to the guys at Ford Farm Tech, so hopefully he's gonna, he's gonna plan to release some new line of broad forks and maybe they'll have some some uh, different variations to them, maybe have some some tines just like these because uh, they work really well. So if I could combine the two broad forks, it'd be like the ultimate broad fork. Alrighty, so as I was broad forking here, I couldn't help but think about how I've showed you this before, how I've showed on my vlog how we do bed prepping in the garden. And it brings to mind some of the redundancies that are on the farm, on the homestead, and even life in itself, that you do a lot of the same tasks over and over again. And uh, sometimes we can get bored and complacent with those things, especially if we didn't choose our career what we're going to do wisely. Well, I like a quote from Ty Lopez, it's just two words, choose wisely. And that's extremely important. When we're younger, we, we thrive on adventure, we thrive on something new, and we thrive on the constant change of the adventure. Uh, but after a point, we get to where we, we settle. Sometimes we don't choose wisely and we end up settling a career that we, we don't like. And as a result of that, we could be, we could be bored and, and just kind of be depressed on where we are. And uh, I, was, I was like that to a degree, uh, but I did choose to go into the fitness industry. And at the time, I really enjoyed it. I really loved it. Um, and I don't regret that I did it, but I got to the point where I became bored. I became complacent and I, and I really didn't enjoy doing what I did. I, I encourage everyone to put your whole heart into what you're doing but to choose wisely so that way it can help you to be more passionate and help enable you to put your heart more into what you're doing. Um, and that's, that's how I, I left the fitness industry, part of the reason why I left, and started homesteading and farming because I, I wanted something. Sometimes your heart changes and, and yes, I'm encouraging you, just like they do on Thousands of Roots, so if you haven't checked out that channel, make sure you do, to put your heart into what you're doing. Uh, and then if you got to the point where you feel like it's just a struggle for you to do that. Maybe that's the time to make some type of change in your life. 
and figure out a way you can make that happen. Sometimes it's a longer process than others, but find a way to make that happen. And then that way, when you are in the, the mundane, the, the routine, the redundant things, if you have chosen what you're gonna do wisely, it can enable you to appreciate the order and stability of the routine and, and still have enjoyment in it. And this tool that I'm getting ready to use right here to flame out these weeds that have sprouted up is another forward farm tech tool. It's called the Kelvin Cultivator. It's one of my favorite tools to use. Uh, this is actually the larger model. Actually, he just released a smaller one that is about half the price. So for those of you who are looking for a good flame weeder, uh, you may want to check out Forward Farm Tech. So what I'm doing with the flaming here is just going over the plant and just kind of passing the heat over it and the heat actually causes the plant to start to wilt and it, start, it destroys and dehydrates the plant from destroying the cell wall and breaking it up uh, but you're not you're not catching the plant on fire at all and the smoke that's coming through right now uh, that's actually from <laughs> the uh, the plants that I had torched before there was still some brown left on the beds here so, and it actually is burning those up so that's where the little bit of smoke's coming from Alrighty, so I just remembered I'm out of fertilizer, so I'm gonna have to come back to working on this bed here. This is almost ready. I just need to add some fertilizer to it and compost. Uh, the other two beds that I took the flame weeder to, uh, it's gonna need a little bit more time. I'm gonna need to actually broad fork that too in a little bit, but uh, let's get to it another time. And you also may see that that tree right there is just hanging over. It's one of those tasks that just, there's just always things that need to be done around the homestead. Uh, but Lacey and the kids are out starting on some work right here in the garden. Let's go see what they're doing. You ladies are doing a fine job here. What are we doing right here? We're weeding basil. There we go, and it is, you're doing a fine job getting away those unwanted plants away from the basil. Excellent job. So, Sayla, with all these things that we do here on the homestead, how do you keep from getting bored with the different tasks that you have to do? Um, I try to um, have fun whenever we're doing it while we're getting the job done. So you just try to add an element of fun to whatever task you're doing. Just to try to make the task a little bit different each time and a little bit more fun? Yeah. That's a really good idea. So that's a good tip for you. Sailor's, that's Sailor's tip for today is how to make your job more fun. It's just by adding fun to it. I run my hand across the dirt and I grab the unwanted plant. And I pretend my hand is a cow. Your hand is a cow just grazing on the different pieces? Yep, and it's pulling it up at the same time. So there you have it. Lessons from a nine-year-old. Because you turned nine years old right this week. Yep. There we go. Oh, here's Josiah. What do you have here, Josiah? Some okra. Look at that okra. That's some burgundy okra. And this is from Baker Creek Seeds. And who is this okra for? For one of our chefs. Yep, and you're harvesting it, right? Mm -hmm. There we go, so we can service them well. So in addition to growing basil in this caterpillar tunnel here, we're also growing our tomatoes. However, we haven't been as diligent at, on maintaining the tomatoes as we should. We have been getting decent harvest on it. Not the harvest that I would really ultimately like to get, but uh, we are getting the harvest from it. We're really behind on pruning them like we should. So one of those things at this point it's like what's the point of even pruning them now because there's so many suckers with fruit already set you don't want to take away your fruit but then it's kind of like a catch-22 this is one of those routine tasks that we should have been on top of but we just just weren't and uh, sometimes that happens so uh, we just do the best we can what we have now and and try to hopefully do better uh, next year. Just one of those things that just this life happens. Not everything's picture perfect. Here's a hornworm where the wasp has laid eggs on its back and the eggs hadn't hatched yet. This is the biggest hornworm I've ever seen. Right here. Look. Don't cut it in half. I'm not going to cut it in half. I'm going to feed it to the chickens. Dang. Nothing big. He's been eating good on our tomato plants. 
And our chickens are gonna eat good now. Good job spotting that one there. Thanks. I don't know, it's so big. It's like, how could we miss that one? But we did. Here, chick, 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 chick. <laughs> This is fun. It's always fun when it's happening. <laughs> Bam, they're going to town already. Yep. She's got it. She's got it. And away she goes with it. That one took it so fast, I don't even think the others had a chance to even realize what was going on there. <laughs> that one right there, that's the one that has it. <laughs> Somebody else coming over here to get too. Oh, production got a snatch part of it. Having fun there, Sale? Yeah, kind of. Okay, so the kids are having a little bit of trouble getting motivated to do the task of harvesting tomatoes and helping prune this morning. So, one of the other things that I suggest doing or I try to do is add a reward for the mundane task and redundant tasks that you have to do. So, after you get accomplish the task, try to make it where you actually earn something. So, guys. How about it if we earn a lollipop or a popsicle once we complete this task? Yeah! Desai, what do you want? Would you yeah. want a lollipop or a popsicle? Sounds good to you. Mm. All right, let's make it happen. Okay. Lacey, if you're okay with continuing to prune, Josiah and I will gather up what you prune and transport them, and Sayla and Micah will harvest the tomatoes. Sound good? Yep. Sounds good. <laughs> We like to grow the indeterminate tomatoes just because it really helps on a market garden standpoint to be able to grow them up uh, twine such as this. Uh, yet one of the things you have to do when you're growing these indeterminate ones is make sure you stay on top of pruning. And uh, we haven't done that. And uh, ideally you want to prune the leaves, the branches below where the fruit is. As you can see there, we have branches that haven't been pruned. As well as you want to prune sucker branch there which is that one you usually have a branch that goes off to the side and then the sucker will be the one that goes right up in there and just like that and you usually want to get those way before that happens so in a previous vlog I talked about admitting when you you're just not doing a good job actually I, one of the things I like to say is just admit when you suck and I didn't do the best job here of maintaining that and this is just an area where I didn't do job do a good job we can do better we will do better but I messed up here I didn't do a good job and it's simple as that Alrighty, the tomatoes that Lacey and Sayla harvested earlier are going to go to our customers. But just a few moments ago, Lacey did some harvesting in her medicinal garden. She actually has some tomatoes growing in there. And she's going to be making something pretty delicious for us for dinner. I don't know what it is yet, so I'm going to be finding out at the same time you are.
stopped and came back because there's one thing I want to share with you guys. My absolute favorite type of basil that I've grown this year there has been this blue spice basil that I got from Baker Creek and it smells fantastic. There's almost like a sweetness to it and I'm gonna get some of this and take it in and I think you're gonna be a little surprised on what I'm gonna pair it with. So what are we gonna have for dinner tonight? Well, what I'm doing is I'm taking some fresh tomatoes and basil, and I'm just gonna put that over pasta with some olive oil and salt, and that will be perfect. And then for dessert, I am using my blue spice basil, and Hi. that's still a secret. So what's the first thing you're doing here? I'm just having up these little tomatoes. So this year in our garden, both gardens, we're growing a variety of cherry tomatoes. So here, Lacey has a mixture of just different yellow ones and orange ones and some red ones. And I cannot remember the different names for the different ones, but they're all Baker Creek seeds. So continuing on with the theme of redundancy and, and boredom, how do you, on a daily basis, continue to do what you do and making food for us? How do you keep it from getting mundane and, and, and boring? And how do you keep going and keep doing it? Because you do a great job. Well, sometimes it is boring, <laughs> to be totally honest. But everybody's got to eat, so you just got to keep going. But one thing is, you know, having a farm and eating with the seasons, you can always like pull in different stuff into your meals and this time of year it happens to be basil and tomatoes and so that's what we're adding to our meal tonight. So for the most part here in our family and on our farm we mostly have traditional roles. I do mainly, I'm the main provider of the household as far as providing the monetary needs and things like that and for the most part Lacey is the one that provides all the meals and puts them together with things that I work outside to grow. So. For those people who are out there who have to cook and do these things on a daily basis, what encouragement would you say that you have for them? Try new things. Don't be afraid to try new things. I've gotten a lot from watching cooking shows over the years. It probably drives Mike crazy. But I'll pick up things here and there and I'll try them out and he'll be like, where did you learn that? And I'm like, well, I watched a cooking show. So just don't be afraid to try new things. Every time I watch one of those cooking shows, it just makes me want to eat. It just makes me hungry. It doesn't make me want to make the food. It just makes me want to eat it. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything better than that. Right there, fresh from the garden. Mm. You know I have to try by. I wish there was taste division where you could taste this. It's pretty good. So what is the finished product? What do we have for the spread here for dinner? Well, we have pasta with Tomatoes with basil, olive oil, and salt, and that's all that is. Then we have leftover turkey, I just heated up a little bit of. And then for dessert, I went ahead and put some on Micah's plate. It is a canary melon with blue spice basil and just a little bit of salt to bring out the flavor. So a little bit different than we normally have, so a little bit of uh, some seasonal garden produce yeah. for dinner. Mm -hmm. 
So this meal is definitely far from boring with a number of seasonal items from the garden. And it looks yummy. I look forward to trying it. And talk, thinking about things being boring. Hey guys, remember that one day it wasn't too boring when we made the slip and slide? Oh, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> This feeling like it's starting now, starting now. I feel adventurous with you. And there is nothing that can hold us back, hold us back. We can do what we want to do. Cause we got all the time in the world. For better or worse, we should stay together. So let's stay young and in love. We should focus on us forever. That was kind of cool. It's going better than all of it. <laughs>